Chris, you, you guys have out-rebounded every team so far that you've played and you're about to face a team that's number one in the nation in rebounding and a guy, a Kyle Kuzma, uh, Kuzma, that's really dominant on the glass. Can you talk about kind of the challenges they pose in the rebounding battle? Well, the results are the results. I mean, they're, they're a team that's big um, and really almost at every position. You know, their front court has really good size. Uh, they have depth. Um, and they make it a priority. So it, it's... It's a challenge every game, uh, no matter who you play. You keep second shots to a minimum and try to get some of your own. And uh, you know, we uh, we got to do more of the same tomorrow. Chris, if you don't mind uh, going back to the Colorado game, Rashid had kind of a, I guess what you might call a breakout night. Um, was that just him kind of getting his sea legs, getting adjusted to the system here? Or how, what would you attribute uh, his game to? Well, I thought we got the ball to him. Um, you know, I thought he, he positioned himself well and, and, and really worked for it. Um, you know, our, our team has to continue, and I have to continue to make a point of it with any big in there. Uh, but I think, you know, both Sean and Rashid can be better post scorers maybe than they've been. We need that. We need to have balance um, in scoring um, with our post and perimeter players. Tyreek's a freshman, he's coming along, but that's not his strength at this point. But we have to do a better job of that. To say, you know, did he get his sea legs under him? Um, I, I think he took advantage of the opportunities that he had. You know, he didn't finish the game one for five. Um, he finished around the basket. Uh, and that's what we need more of him and Sean as we move forward. And in terms of the balance of playing him versus Sean, is that just going to be on kind of a game-to-game -game matchup, to, which that, without giving too much away, obviously. Is that game-to-game kind of? Yeah, I'm going to play the, the, the guys that, that uh, do the best job in both practicing in the games. And I thought Rashid, during the course of the game, was, was really playing, uh, you know, at a high level. They're a tough team to play two bigs together against um, simply because uh, their, their four-man isn't necessarily a four-man. He's a kid that hit two or three threes. You know, he's out in the perimeter a little bit. And so... Um, you know, we opted to go more of uh, Sean and Rashid versus uh, you know, Sean for Rashid versus Sean and Rashid. Coach, you said the other night this, this team takes its foot off the gas pedal more than any team you've been around. How do you coach that into guys to kind of make sure they can kind of stay full throttle to the final bell? Uh, well, I, I hope uh, a couple things happen. And number one, um, reality. It's one thing to, to say it when you beat uh, somebody by 25 points and maybe have them down 38. Uh, it's another thing when you drop a game to say that um, we couldn't sustain that level of play in order to leave uh, the venue with, with a victory. And so the reality is if you don't play for 40 minutes and have the same attention span on each and every possession, then you get handled losses. And hopefully uh, our team is... is a competitive bunch and doesn't like to lose. And then secondarily, I, I've got to do a better job in practice of making guys accountable um, every second they're on the floor. And then they have to hold themselves uh, accountable and hold one another accountable um, so that that, that doesn't um, they keep popping up. In a backwards way, is this sort of a good test for you guys, knowing that you've had these games in Baylor against Colorado and here in Utah? It's not a good thing to lose, but is it going to kind of just get that out of your system? Uh, well, I don't, I don't think you get anything out of your system. Um, when you compete, there's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser. And we set up the schedule. Uh, I said at the time that we weren't going to go undefeated. And I didn't say that because I didn't have faith in our team. But, you know, the more quality opponents you schedule, the harder you make your schedule, the more you're going to make, make yourself susceptible to uh, dropping games. Now, I'm more worried about where we go from here and how we get better and how we learn from those experiences than, than dwelling on them uh, and saying, I wish we would have scheduled differently. I like challenges. I like to compete to win. I want to play the best teams we can. And uh, we, did, we came up on the short end of the stick. And so, again, I said this before, our schedule doesn't get any easier simply because we're at home. Chris, going back to the balance of the team, you mentioned before it's a chicken and the egg kind of um, situation with guards when they feed the post because they have to trust the post players to make those baskets. Do you think they are feeding the post players at all? Um, no, not enough. Um, 
again, it, you have to work for, for post position. You know, a lot of guards have never played in the post, so they don't know what it's like to seal their man and hold off a defender. Um, you can't do it for seven, eight seconds. You know, you know not against a good opponent, uh, not, not the one that's fighting defensively. So guards don't necessarily have that experience. Uh, there's only a fine, you know, short window that, that you can get the ball into the post. We've got to be able to do that. We had opportunities in the last eight minutes against Colorado where our post guys had it going. You know, Sean was scoring in the low post. Rashid had had some good moments. And we had two or three opportunities where we caught the ball in the perimeter and we allowed the defender that was guarding the ball to shield us from being able to throw it in. And, and you know, I was always taught that you, you, the guy guarding you is irrelevant when you're throwing the ball in the post. All you're worried about is how the post is being defended, throwing it away from the defense and to your offensive teammate. And we couldn't do that. And, again, I, or we didn't do that. I got to keep – drilling and we got to keep drilling so that we can make those post passes so that we can continue to go to things that are working in the course of the game. Is that why so many guys try to maybe settle for three-pointers and, and bring the team back in the game that way, maybe be a hero in a sense? Um, I think those are more maturity issues and more um, pushed into a different role issue than, than looking off the post. I think some of the, the the times where we didn't throw it inside weren't, weren't necessarily our more experienced players. But, again, it doesn't say freshman on your jersey or like, hey, this is only a seventh game. Just throw the ball in the post. How do you think the freshmen are doing? It's been a couple hard knocks for Quentin of late and Tyreek and seems to have some foul trouble. I mean, how would you assess them through at this point in the season? Like typical freshmen. You know, they're um, – they're going to be up and down at times. I think they're, they're really coachable. Uh, I think Quentin has become a really good defender, especially off the ball, which is usually the last thing that uh, takes place for freshmen. Um, you know, I think he's still at times turnover prone and playing hesitant. But, you know, hopefully with more experience on the floor, um, you know, and he'll get better in that area. Tyreek has to stay out of foul trouble. and He's got to learn, you know, how to make free throws and, Nobody puts in more time than Tyreek. You know, if you're ever at a Xavier practice when it ends and everybody walks out of the gym, Tyreek stays there and shoots free throws. So uh, I love that about him. You know, I wish for him he was getting better results. But it doesn't always work that way in life. You know, you can work hard, work hard, work hard, and you still don't get that job. You still don't get that promotion. You know, but you can do one of two things. You can pout about it and quit working hard, and then you have no chance for success. Or you can continue to um, work, and hopefully good, good things happen usually to people that continue to work hard. Speaking of free throws, I know it's all kind of a hard subject to, to tackle because it's guys on the line, you know, it's what's in their head, what's the crowd doing. But after the last couple games and it's been a struggle at the line, how do you kind of guide them to a place where they can be more accurate? Uh, we continue to shoot more free throws um, in practice, outside of practice. Um, you know, we stress – in, in drills, we're going to put pressure on free throws where your team's going to have to run or now they have to go on the defensive end. Uh, we're going to do everything that, that we can to try to correct those problems. But a lot of it is just you know, repetition. Um, and then being able to carry over what you do when you're in the gym by yourself and blocking everything out and being able to do it in the game. And, you know, for those people that, you know, go, oh, during the game and say out in the stands and, how can a guy not shoot free throws? They, they have no clue. They have no clue. They've never played basketball at a highly competitive level. They weren't a good enough athlete. Um, if it's just a static thing, I mean, I can throw a cornhole bag too. But, like, can you do it with pressure? Can you do it when, when it matters? Um, so the people that at me on Twitter and say, does your team ever practice free throws? The, to, the, to the people that at our guys on Twitter, like, grow up, get a life. Our guys are working on it every day. Nobody's trying to miss free throws. Has that been a problem? Like, not a abuse per se, but kind of social media harassment in that area? It's a problem in our society. It's not a problem with me because right. I really don't care what you, what you at me, what you add at me. Is that how you'd say it? Yeah. You can at me all you want. I just, I just mute you. I never have to worry about you again. It's a great function of Twitter. But... It's a problem with our society, you know, it just is. Everybody's a 
awesome critic these days. But you know what? I'm not complaining. You know, I'm just giving you reality. Our, our guys, you know, college basketball players, college football players, college athletes in general, they, they, they play in a different world than, than I did, than and my coaches did, uh, than any of us did, really, that are older. And so maybe they're used to it. Um, it's different. It's different. But we, you know, we, we, we don't worry about all that stuff. I know I went on a tangent, but it's like a prank phone call, you know, when you were a kid. Did you hang up the phone and get mad? I mean, for what? Unless you had caller ID, which, you know, we didn't. 